Have you ever wanted to take shrooms, but you just haven't? Maybe you're too afraid, or maybe you just don't really know how to do it. Well, this is my journey. I just took uh, about a half of an eighth of shrooms, and I turned it into a very liquefied juice. So I'm waiting for it to kick in, and I decided I was gonna record my whole entire experience tonight taking shrooms. That way you guys can know exactly what it is to expect if you've never done it before and I kind of just get in the flow of having this as a divine practice for yourself so one of the things that I really really recommend it's like these are my musts okay do it with somebody that you know or do it by yourself that's number one all right find a place where nobody's going to bother you whatsoever I'm in a cabin in the middle of nowhere and there is absolutely no um, like service. So I'm off the grid completely. Number three, I really recommend putting yourself in a mental space where you're gonna understand, okay, ah, while I'm preparing the shrooms before I take them, I want them to take me to this certain location, maybe heal my inner child, maybe help me understand the cosmos more, unlock more magic into my reality whatever it is that you're looking for in this present moment you really want to put that intention into your brew before you consume the psychedelic substance which is mushrooms all right um number four that i would really give is know that you're in this mode of transcendence so even before you start your trip and you consume everything leave everything taken care of like we cooked there's food ready so whenever like the substance kicks in and we get hungry we don't have to do anything super technical to eat or do anything like that i highly recommend number five not to mix substances if this is your first time doing it it's really really great to take mushrooms by themselves they target your sacral chakra they, they target your emotions they really help you let go of some stuff that you have not been looking at and you should also recognize that it is a living substance right like mushrooms are a fungi that lives right it has its consciousness so you want to be respectful before you take it that's absolutely critical all right so your mindset is everything as the trip is starting to kick in and just know that you're in a good place stay in that good place like i'm gonna have an amazing experience everything's relaxed, everything's taken care of, I'm safe, I feel amazing, I know that they're going to be kicking in pretty soon, so just let me just know that everything is going to go exactly as planned. I am the controller of this experience. I'm not going to let the substance take me far away. I am actually going to use the substance to enhance my consciousness. A lot of times people take substances just like this and they allow the substance to consume them and then kind of like teleport them somewhere else. That's one way of doing it. But if you want to become a conscious creator of your reality, you need to learn how to integrate these two states together. So one of the things that my masters have taught me with psychedelics is when you take psychedelics, not only do you not want it to let it consume you, but you want to be able to remember the frequency right so even after this experience of mushrooms which i haven't had mushrooms in like a couple years the last time i took them i had a really bad experience still very enlightening but it was not fun for me whatsoever um i put myself in this position of understanding okay well like that happened last time this is not going to happen again i'm ready to like let it teach me something so i can remember what it's like to take mushrooms again and I can access that state of consciousness whenever I'm in a lucid or a non-lucid state okay so you want to basically like energy work if you ever learned Reiki or you've learned Antihai Alchemy um, you're gonna learn that like you can memorize these frequencies that's why some shamans can take a substance once and never have to take it again in their lives because they remember that frequency very intimately in their mind and it's a part of them Similar to when I took ayahuasca about a year, more than a year ago, um, I've never felt like I needed to take it again. Like, I'm so connected with Mother Earth since that moment 
that I, it's just almost like unnecessary. I could do it, but it's not gonna be something that is absolutely needed for me to reach the next space because I'm connected to that dimension in the first place. So if you wanna learn how to take psychedelics like a shaman, it's all about training your consciousness, understanding that you are in control of the experience. It's a little bit of you being in control, but also surrendering because it's a dance. You decide to step into the mushroom kingdom and interact with that society. And they have so much wisdom that obviously the human experience is not gonna digest regularly. So it's a dance. You have control knowing that you are in the moment. You are gonna make sure everything's positive, enlightening, taking you to the next level. You're gonna keep these positive emotions in there. And you're also gonna trust that like the spirits of the mushrooms have heard your requests for whatever it is that you're seeking on your journey in this moment. As that happens, whenever you start hearing the spirits talk to you or you start feeling lighter in general, you want to be able to put yourself in a position of saying, okay, I surrender and I trust you. I know you're not going to do anything harmful to me. When you surrender, you're then saying, okay, I'm letting go of my fear, the fear of the unknown. That's why psychedelics are so important when we're training our consciousness because we dive into the unknown through familiar aspects that help us grow in unexpected ways. So I'm really excited to share with you my ride on this and uh, I kind of feel a little bit like out of breath just because I can already kind of feel it start coursing through me. It kind of like picks up your blood rate and you kind of feel like ready to do stuff. So, you know, as it kicks in, I'm just gonna come about every hour or so, give you a checkup on what it is that I'm doing and how I'm feeling it, and then we'll go from there. Sending you all my love. Okay, so it's been about like two hours now, and they kicked in about like, I took them out around like seven o'clock. They kicked in around like 7.30 when I was making that video. Um, so it's been a two full, uh, two full hours, and I don't know. I've, obviously, you can see it on my aura and on my face, like what's been happening. The initial, like takeoff, can be pretty rough, um, especially if you're like a newcomer. But in general, it's just kind of like always asking you, like, what's there? What needs to be released? Are you willing to release this right now? Your trip can be so much easier if you just choose to let this go right now. So a lot of like the coming up is you kind of confronting whatever's been sitting there for a while, rather it's like uh, fear or envy or anger or not knowing. Not knowing is like, I think one of the biggest things that affects a lot of people and um, the first like the first hour or so I first felt my ancestors come in and they were like hey like this and this and this and this and this about your life has to change if you want to have this like greater experience that we all want you to have and it's like okay like all right fine I listen to it and you're like you can really feel it like you, you can feel their presence when they step into the room and like one of the really cool things about this trip that I guess I've never done with my ancestors is like they were like we're not going to take you on this deep crazy voyage where you need to live things firsthand or anything like that we're just going to have a powwow and we're all going to sit around this fire and we're just going to have a talk we're just going to be real and if you end up having like triggers of emotions or whatever it is so be it but we're all just going to be here right now sitting around this fire in the living room no complications doesn't have to be anything super far out so after i had that first wave of them like saying that to me and then like kind of like educating me on what needed to be changed um i i heard like this roar from like the distance and it was like obviously coming from like my mind right and I followed the roar because I was like, oh, where, where the fuck is this coming from? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to follow it. And I followed it into 
like an obviously an alternate dimension somewhere deep inside and there was this dragon and this dragon was coiled up in a ball when I first like got there and it didn't really look like a dragon it just kind of looked like a marble piece of stone a huge piece of stone and it never clicked at first but I could hear the growling and I was just kind of like okay and I was looking around at the stone where are you and then instantly I saw an eye that was like douche you know what I mean and it was like whoa it's it tense really- and then all of a sudden I saw it like get wider and I could feel the presence of like it being more afraid than me in that present moment so like it was showing itself and it, it looked like it was rotting and like it was huge and like it was an undead dragon and like all this like really intense like a regular person who didn't understand what was going on subconsciously probably would have walked away from that and been like holy shit like really bad trip but I understood that this dragon was just acting out of defense and whatever was happening was just because it was more afraid than I was and I was just like hey I'm not here to hurt you like I really don't that's not my intention I'm just here to share space if anyone's hurt you in the past I'm not that person so and I just vibrated that energy out there and then with just a few seconds to a few minutes that like the dragon itself stopped showing me like this rotting carcass and like this negativity and it calmed down and it recognized that like okay I'm not here to like do anything like for real 100% like I'm not here to do anything negative to you no matter what it is and I just kept telling it like I accept you for what you are like if you want to show yourself to me like this rotting corpse if you want to show yourself to me as like this ferocious beast that's okay like I accept you however it is that you want to show yourself to me and like I remember I went over to like touch it and it grew like these spikes on its tail like a defense mechanism like almost touching like a ton of a ton of uh thorns if you ever touched a tangerine tree i think it is it has a bunch of like thorns on it and it's like really scary and um i still decided to go and touch it and like i could i remember seeing my astral hand touch the dragon on the scales and like my astral hand got cut and it started bleeding and i was just like it's okay like i accept you as you are no big deal like if that's how you want to be like I'm not gonna harm you and then it like really dismantled the the dragon altogether so from there I was like just sitting back again in the powwow around the fire with my ancestors and my significant other and it was kind of like waves are just coming in and out and in and out and in and out through like those like states of consciousness And on the third wave, it was really just talking to me and showing me like that dragon is partially you. Like there's something inside of you that feels that it has to have like that level of ferociousness to protect yourself from whatever's coming through. And it's because like it has to do with some sort of self-acceptance. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I feel like I self-accept myself, but like obviously if this is happening, there's something more to it that I'm not looking at. And that kind of like opened up this other plethora of just understanding like, whoa, like if if shit were to hit the fan tomorrow, at least I had this experience. At least I'm at peace now. At least I can cherish this. Wouldn't I want to soak this up? If tomorrow everything just collapsed? And then in that moment, I'm like, of course. Like, of course. I would hold on to this. And I started reflecting on, like, the rest of my vacation while I was here. And it's just like, I relived my vacation again in my mind. And in that moment like as an astral version of myself i was able to appreciate more each moment that i had this past journey it was so powerful and it got to a point where i heard my multi-dimensional selves like 
thousands and thousands and thousands of versions of me in alternate universes had all stopped and they were doing like the same thing that I was doing right now. Like we were all, we had all taken shrooms. We were all in this like a very similar situation of peace and serenity, whether we were at the same cottage or a different one, but had the same vibes or whatever it was. Like we were all in unison and connected now. And in that moment, I was able to just like talk to all of my counterparts that were like on the same wavelength that I was at. And I was like, hey, like I send you all love. Like I love you, doesn't matter if you're in the future, in the past, in an alternate reality, like I love you. And I'm just sending you all that love and like I accept you for who you are no matter what kind of bullshit is going on in your in your personal reality. And then I heard them like say the same thing to me and they're like, yo, you know what, brother? Like we love you too. Like we accept you and like thanks for just like giving us that shout out. But the whole entire time I'm just like literally just talking to myself in other dimensions and it was like really unifying to the point where those of us that were like conscious of like okay we're the healer versions of axel like we get this we're all in connection with each other it was like, okay well us we're gonna team up together and we're gonna heal and we're gonna send good vibes to all the other alternate versions of axel that are struggling in their dimensions or they're full of fear because they don't know what to do next or because we as like these other versions of axel that have this higher consciousness of like what's going on in our personal realities we know the secret like we know how easier things can be and like if you guys can't see it those other versions of us we're going to be your spirit guides and we're going to walk you out of that trauma that dark space whatever so you can elevate yourself and in a way like i had seen like having that experience i'm getting swallowed back into it but like for a while i was seeing myself as like the sole pioneer to everything that i'm doing and not really looking at myself as like this collective of beings like if you've ever taken uh dmt that's the first thing that dmt shows you it's like you're this being that's made up of all these smaller beings and like those beings are interconnected to other dimensions. So like you're so finely interconnected to all these other dimensions. And that's what I teach in Antohai, like is how to become an ascended master, getting past the need to like reincarnate and start over and over and over from the square zero because you understand how fully interconnected you are with everything and yourself particularly. I, it's just like every time I go on a psychedelic quest, like I have something very similar like this happen. But this was like the most quickest and most profound that I've had so far where I've been able to just like talk to my other versions and then even say like, hey, all the other versions that are like going for the same thing that I'm going for, you know what I mean? Let's get it. Like, I don't see you as competition. Like, it's not this Axel has to get it and then fuck every other Axel that's in the paradigm. Like, no, it's like, I accept every one of you. If if there's multiple of you that want to get to the same point that I'm looking at, like, great. Like, let's do this. If we can actually get there faster, if we do it together. And then, boof. When I had that understanding and that collection of self, I was back again with my ancestors by the fire with my partner having like this profound experience of just being in the now and just being like oh wow like I'm I'm in nature and I'm just off the grid like thank god you know and it's it's crazy so like this should be able to tell you why you should do mushrooms um it's not as bad as it sounds it's not as bad as people paint it out to be can you have a bad experience absolutely i've had like a very bad experience on shrooms before but it was mostly because i didn't want to deal with my bullshit like that's really what it comes down to and like 
if you really treat it like you know you're getting into a contract with somebody and it's about to show you what's really good and you're not going to lie to yourself anymore about it and no matter how difficult it is or how absurd it is to like absorb whatever's coming your way you're going to just be a receptacle <laughs> and you're just going to surrender into it and you're just going to take it and it'll show you it'll just it'll be a, a very smooth ride and that's what it really just showed me on my pickup was just like this and this and this and this and this do you recognize this is your problem and i was like okay fine i let go of a bunch of energy and i was like oh my god thank god because i felt like i was gonna be like oh my god this could swallow me in and the whole entire time it's reminding me you are the i am presence like you and every multi-dimensional version of yourself you're all the i am right now you have control over this experience even though we the mushroom kingdom is like having a very intimate connection with you like we are here to educate you on yourself like that's really what it was and I remember once I heard that I saw like this retreat like it and I saw like these women dressed in white and there was like this table made out of wood and it was like really bright outside like a summer's day and but it was like really it was so beautiful it was so serene and this mushroom spirits were like oh this image right here this image we're, we're just constructing this image from your imagination so that you can have the like the the easiest interpretation of what we're trying to do for you like you're here at the mushroom kingdom spawn resort like so you can have a major shift in your reality and i was like oh so then i relaxed into that because i was like okay like they're showing me themselves in a way that's familiar to me that's comfortable to me I've done this a million times before. Sure, let's just do this. I'm just going to surrender into it. And as that that happened, it was just like fluid after that. It was just like they knew I was serious. I knew I was serious. And what is there left if we're both being honest and authentic with each other? It's the sheer experience, the sheer vibration of everything that's going on right now. That's pretty much it like nothing else matters and they were they were like yo like you get so caught up in the future like you need to understand that like it's all right now like all all of your ideas towards the future they're only complicated because you naturally create them with complication like we do not we do not recognize that as like hu like spiritual beings having a human experience that our creations can be so much easier than what we give them credit for. Like you say to yourself, like I wanna get that house or I wanna become a millionaire or you know, I wanna find my significant other. And like you put instantaneously, the moment you say you want that, resistance. Like in order for you to get that house, you're gonna have to hustle. You're gonna have to like, you know, really put in a lot of research work to get all the best deals and find the right house and all this other stuff instead of just saying like the creation is the house and it's coming to me easy plain and simple like it's all gonna just work out because that's how it is that's what that was my creation same thing when you want to like find a significant other you put out that mode of like oh you know that person's like a million miles away on the other side of the the planet right and is it they could be two street two streets over you never know but like you're the one that complicated the original thought of aligning yourself with that being because you put these obscure rules to it you didn't say it was easier than what it was and it's just like same thing with being a millionaire you want to be a millionaire the millionaire status can happen to you in a bunch of different ways but in your mind you have to hustle you have to sacrifice you have to do all this other stuff to get there and like you're right you are right if that's your creation you're absolutely 100 percent right you are going to have to go through that experience but then at the same time if you say like hey it's gonna be easy it's gonna just it's just gonna fall on my lap because that's just creation itself knowledge is power i know that i am in control of all this then boof 
you're right. You're totally right. Like you won't have to do anything for it. And that's where like the fine line of being on new earth or like heaven on earth and being in like the 3D earth where a lot of people are being affected by because we can't separate them, right? Everything's one. Everything's I am. Like you cannot separate it. But one of the other things that it really highlighted to me while I'm on, at this like shroom kingdom resort is that like we think that everything is, right? And every everything is created already. But if everything was created already, why would there be a need for creation? You don't even think about that. Like, you're just like, oh, you know, like we have manifest destiny. That's so everything's already happened. But then we take away the fact that like not everything's fully created because we are currently creating in the now to make the shift to whatever possibility is happening. That's the whole purpose of us having this human experience as source incarnate. Like we're supposed to remember that we are God. We're supposed to remember how powerful we are and like how more simple things are than what they actually appear to be. This is your illusion. This is your reality. Like why have you made it so complicated? And I remember being in that state of having these downloads and then saying like, but I had I had human experiences that told me it had to be this difficult. Like my childhood, I was not in a position to even like recognize that I had this much power, even though I always felt at my fingertips. A lot of kids feel that, but I couldn't comprehend it. So like all the experiences that I went through like how could I have ever buffered myself from them from getting to the limitations that I have now and they were like because you forgot that you're God like had you been born and given the name God like you would have never felt like you needed to create a persona or an identity that got you closer to God because you would have already known who you were at birth but that's the illusion of all of us like we're we're brought into this world by people who may not have been as conscious as those of us that are awakening right now. And you need to understand that like they were given a false reality and they created narratives from that false reality and passed it on to you and you not knowing anything because you they forgot that they were God and they obviously have allowed you to believe the same story that they were given about you being an individual separate from God. Is this the biggest illusion of them all that you just have to be able to say like had I been born God had my name been God from the get-go like who would I have been if I didn't have to pursue the persona of Axel or any other persona that you may have created across your path because people change their names often so it's just like this really powerful experience of just being like accept yourself like fuck it like if people don't like you then that's that's a personal problem for them for whatever reason it may be and you don't need to even understand what it is right and like if you don't accept yourself then the problem will come when someone else does not accept you because you're seeking validation from some other space that's what's going to trigger you so you have the power as a creator to say like i'm fully embodied i know my truth you know like and that was something else that my ancestors around the fire were saying, like, Axel, have you not mastered immortality? And I was just kind of like, yeah. Like, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I was drawing alchemy symbols. And I always knew that, like, reality was a lie. And, like, people didn't get it. I always felt disconnected. I didn't belong here. Like, why did I come here? Like, I should be somewhere else. Like, I was always questioning, hey, I need somebody to, please, somebody from somewhere, come save me. Like, somewhere else, you know. And it was never, like, somewhere from this realm, like, someone, please come save me. It was, like, somebody, somebody in deep space, come out of nowhere, just beat me out, this bitch. I've always felt that way. And then it's just kind of, like, being on this pathway, you, you know, you forget how powerful you are. I'm guilty of it. Fuck it. Like it's true. Like I'm still having I'm still having a human experience. 
And as an ascended master, I have learned the tricks to bend reality in the craziest ways and I can share that with other people, but I'm still going through my human experience. I'm not perfect whatsoever. I have my flaws and really to be an ascended master is just, just to understand how reality works that you are i am the presence of everything some ascended masters can tap into that organically on their own and they can reach home on their own others need help from their brothers and their sisters their older brothers and sisters that are awake like myself right and like i still look to my siblings my brothers and my sisters that are in the same field that i'm doing and I look for wisdom amongst them when I feel lost. And I notice that like the same download I had was a download that they had. So like I know what's up. I just am the only person that's not accepting it, right? Because I'm not accepting myself. I'm not accepting my truth. And then whenever I hit a point where somebody else doesn't accept me because I haven't fallen into this place of accepting myself, it hits me that much harder. So what's, what's the, the truest purpose of our reality? It's remembering that we have it all. Like the world is changing and we know this, we feel it. Some people are resistant as fuck and they don't want to let it go. And those people are going to be left in a totally separate template that affects them. Like that's what you're creating. Not everybody is meant to ascend in this lifetime. That, that would be erroneous to believe because perfection and imperfection have to exist simultaneously with each other. Saying that everyone on this planet is ready to ascend and understand that they're godly and that they have so much control over their reality, but they've complicated it for such a long time, that's not something that everyone can digest and that's not something that everyone is ready for. But those of us that are sitting here and recognizing that like, that's what's happening to us like time is bending like we're starting to get messages of like whoa far out things that we then recognize is true like you know we're we're talking to interdimensional beings or we're seeing aliens because they're in our visual field because we're responding to that like our environments our world are changing for us that's not the same case for everybody else and you need to be able to look with your consciousness. If you're if you're having these crazy, lucid, psychedelic experiences on a regular basis, fuck taking mushrooms. Like you just have it on a regular basis. You need to be able to say to yourself, like, if I see reality for what it is, and I know that when I say I want this one thing, it happens in just a couple of days. You can't share that experience with anybody else. You know how many crazy experiences I've had in my energetic life as a shaman that i'm like i wish i had a phone for this to record this because nobody's gonna believe me i wish somebody else was here witnessing what i am witnessing because this is pure magic this is unreal like this is something from a fable you know how many times i've had those experiences and i've had to just swallow the pill and say they weren't meant for anybody else they were just meant for me to understand and maybe one day I can help somebody else have the same experience too. Like, and when they're having that experience, I can explain to them what that experience is and why they got there and what the meaning is behind it, right? But if you're not, if you're not willing to recognize that like you're blessed and you have everything you need and your awakening is all that really mattered to shift the collective consciousness, great. Regardless of whether or not you feel you can personally save someone like in an alternate reality who just just not comprehend like higher alchemy higher levels of consciousness and existence regardless of whether or not you can shift their perception into where we're at right now you're still doing them a service by awakening yourself and owning your story like owning your story because nobody else is living your story. I get a lot of times students who are like, I need external validation from my experiences that I'm having, but really like, you're the one that's having it. There's been times where I've had moments where I'm like, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna lose my mind. But then I'm the one that's in control. I'm the one that has to respond to it because it's my mind. 
is nothing else. Like, no one can jump into my mind and pull it out. Like, there are people like me that can definitely go into your system, go into your Akashic Records, like, talk to your guides, talk to your subconscious, reprogram. There are people who can do that, but you need to learn how to do that for yourself. Like, a lot of people have gotten really comfortable with saying, like, oh, I have a problem. I'm just going to go to my Reiki guy just so, like, my Reiki guy can, like, fix up this quick issue. How about you learn Reiki for yourself? Quantum Reiki. Learn that shit for yourself. Then you don't need to depend on that person. And then, like, of course, the entrepreneur has a natural fear of saying, like, I'm going to empower the rest of the world be because I'm going to lose out on business. If everybody knows what to that knows how to do what I'm doing, like, how am I going to thrive, right? Then people don't need me anymore. People are always going to need you because you're constantly creating, you're constantly manifesting. People are constantly waking every day at different intervals for themselves. So there is absolutely no lack other than the lack that you're creating because you're saying that, like, it has to be this one way. You have to be able to say that, like, hey, I'm letting go of that fear. I accept the fact that, like, I will always have a purpose. I accept the fact that I will always be needed. I accept the fact that I accept myself, regardless of whatever anybody else has to say about me and my journey. Because ain't nobody living my life for me. Ain't nobody got into where I am at but me, right? And it's hard because, the, like, if you read any form of esoterica, like, all, all the esoteric masters will tell you the same shit. Like, there's going to come a moment where you are vibrating so high and the rest of the collective that is not at your speed is going to believe that you're crazy. They're going to try to defame you. They're going to try to shoot you down. They might even go after you and they'll try to kill you. But you need to know your truth. Like, if you know that you're the embodiment of truth, if you're God, then, you know, you you will go through that experience that Jesus had. And you'll, you'll resurrect yourself in a new reality anyway. But ultimately, if you are feeling like you're a divine being that's had many different kinds of incarnations, like, don't be afraid of embracing your magic. And don't be afraid if other people don't get it. Because you've been training for a long time to do what you're doing right now. And you've been waiting a long time to be able to live in a society where there's more people like you to do that. Okay, so embrace yourself and don't try to force it down other people's throats that like you're all magical. Like you got to live your way this way. You're not 5D. Fuck you. Like you can't have that vibration because if you're saying that if you're judging another person, and you're saying you're not 5D. Oh, God, I can't stand you. Then you have an issue like you have an issue. You have not fully understood unconditional love. Unconditional love doesn't mean that you need to love everybody for every mistake that they make it's understanding that like they're making mistakes based off of the level of the consciousness that they have at that moment and that like nothing can be fully taken personal even though it does interact with you but that's the level of limitation that happens to people you know and i'll give you a really great example like where i'm at is like there are no people of color but this is the first <laughs> this is the furthest I had to get to to like find like Zen, right? And like I'm completely oblivious because where I live there's ton there's queer people everywhere, gay people everywhere, there's people of all forms of colors, like it's so inclusive that like I forget when I go to other places like this that like, oh, you know, you know, like that's the rest of the world. And I had this hoodie on and I had it like, you know, over, I had a cap and obviously I had to have my mask, right? Because that's the law, right? Um, and I remember walking in to the grocery store and like, I could feel like tension out of nowhere, but it never clicked to me after, after I left, okay? And they were all freaking out because they, they all own they live in the middle of nowhere right like they don't have people of color so they don't know what's actually happening out in the world because they're all isolated in their own little cabins and they're not dealing with anything so they see a person of color with a black hoodie with a mask with a hat on 
try and do some quick grocery shopping just so I can get back to my cottage and just chill the fuck out. And they register <gasps> BLM. <gasps> oh my God, be careful. Be careful. Oh my God, everybody be like, and I never like, you know, I have great Zen vibes. So like, I'm just like, whatever, you know, like I was oblivious to it. And then later when I get in the car, my partner points out like, that's most likely why they were acting that way. And I was like, whoa. And in that moment, I kind of felt slightly bad because I'm like, I didn't mean to like project that to anybody. And like, you know, I'm not, I, that's, I don't believe in racism. Um, and I tried my, my hardest <laughs> to not like put myself in racist mentality. Um, and I think like any, any minority person, like whether you're a gay person or you're a person of color, like we have trauma based off of race that we are each working from to dismantle. It doesn't matter like who you are and like how that got recorded inside of you, whether it's through your ancestors or your own personal experiences and biases. But like, you know, when that came to me, I was like, oh, well, these people live in the middle of nowhere. So like I was that chaotic version of my, like I was chaos incarnate for them because they had that fear and like them interacting with me thinking that that was the notion um really just set things aside and set things like open and I hope that that was like educational for those people you know like oh you know like it's not as bad as it seems and that they don't have to feed into the media if not then they got to confront their fear and see like there's a way around it, right? So you can't be perfect in everyone's reality and you're not supposed to be. You can only be accepting of yourself in your present reality and accept the higher consciousness that you have and that you're willing to share when other people are willing to accept it. That's pretty much it. So that's like two hours in. I'm not really feeling like I'm super heavy coasting anymore. Um, this is not like the most amount of mushrooms that I've ever taken. Honestly, I've taken like a whole ounce to myself and that's been pretty intense and really insane. Um, but still it's worth it. No matter how much, what amount you take, take it and try it. Like if you have the opportunity, you should try it. Same thing with like DMT, same thing with LSD, same thing with ayahuasca. If you have the opportunity to take it, take it. Like, it's going to show you a lot of things that you were oblivious to and not even paying attention to. Things that will shift you and help you grow. Sending you all my love. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, give it a like, hello. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in our next episode.